This video is split in four different sections. The first one is going to be about creating um, achievement entity board within the Google Play Console. Second one will have to do with integrating the Google SDK. The third one will have to do with signing in the Google SDK. And the fourth one will be to report progress and also report uh, your score to a leaderboard and also to achievements. This video is some sort of recap where I will be talking over all the issues I ran into. So you might help have some problem here and there. Um, I ran into a lot of those, so I'll be talking about those. And if you'd like to see the long form of me resolving those problems, not just vocally, but also see it on, on the screen there, um, I do have it in my course. It is in the very last section published, so section number 14, in which I go through all of this, but it's roughly 40 minutes of video instead of, I don't know how long this one is gonna be. <laughs> all right, so let's begin. We're gonna go quickly. First step will be to create these within the console. So now I've accessed my console. I'm gonna go find my app. For example, my app in this case is the Subway Skater. I'm gonna go under here in the play game services. That's all we need to look for on the left hand side. Make sure we set this up. You will first have to configure your game. So under configuration, go under edit property and just fill that in completely. Second, we'll have to do with um, creating one achievement, at least one. Here I have collect fish, uh, create achievement button is right here. Third one, we'll have to do with leaderboard. So I created myself a leaderboard. Of course, if you're not using that, you don't have to create it. And, um, and then finally, there is one last step that has to do with credential, and that's the hardest one and the most, the one you might run into more troubles with, basically. Uh, here in the credential section, you're gonna find the add credential button. This is gonna take you to your Google console. Thing you might run into in here is they're gonna ask you if you have any sensitive scope. In our case, we don't. Um, we're just looking at, at the email. Uh, we don't have any, anything sensitive such as writing to your uh, YouTube or writing to your Google Calendar, we don't have anything like that. So you won't have any problem with the OAuth token. Um, it will all be generated for you and you'll find it here uh, once you're done. You can refresh the OAuth client and it's gonna show up down there. You can just select the one you created and if you don't have any, you'll find the create OAuth client right there. So that's gonna take you to the page I've just mentioned. So go to create OAuth client in the Google Cloud platform, follow these steps and everything should be fine. If you have any issue with this step, I am uh, open to helping you out if you just post a comment in the description down below, but it's a straightforward one. I don't think you're gonna run into any, any other problem in here. All right, now the second step, and that was the worst one for me, is to integrate the Google Play um, plugin without causing any issue to your game. So you will have a GitHub. Uh, there's a GitHub in the description down below. You basically have to download this, and inside of it, if I still have it laying around, yep, I do, you will find a current build folder and then a Unity package. You actually only need the Unity package. So once you have that, go ahead, open it up, and it's gonna merge within your Unity engine project. One last thing we have to do for integrating this package properly, we have it here, everything seems to compile, uh, but we have to go under Window, Google Play Games, which should be there if everything went well, Setup, Android Setup, and here you will find a bunch of texts that, uh, not texts, text that you have to input and this text can actually be found on the website you were on a couple of seconds ago. So over here on the Google Play Game Services under either the achievement or leaderboard, you will be able to find one button here at the top called get resources and that's what we're looking for. Under the get resource, you are going to copy this code which basically just contains um, constant uh, strings for your achievements, all of them, and also your leaderboard, all of them also including your package name, and what really matter is this ID. So you're gonna be copying this over to here. Hit set up, and then we're good to go. If you run into any issue whatsoever when you imported this, and you're not able to one, run your game, or second, build your game, here is what you have to do. First, you have to make sure that everything was resolved uh, properly. And to do that, you can head over to assets, external dependency manager, Android, resolve, and also force resolve. You're gonna press on these two. If you see that there is still a problem, um, we're gonna to have to do a couple of things. So for example here, I am trying to run into one issue and that's exactly the issue I'd like to run into. So I have the Unity version 2019.4.14 and here I get a problem where it says my Java home is not set. I'm just trying to update my, uh, my manifest, I'm just trying to update my Android dependency and it doesn't work because Java Home is not set. You can see it right here. Now to fix this error, it's actually a quite annoying bug. All you have to do is head over to 
edit, um, preferences, external tool, go down all the way here, uncheck the Android and also uncheck the, uh, the GDK and also the SDK. Now I'm going to check them back again. So enable them, clear my console, go over to my asset and I'm going to do a force resolve in which case everything actually worked. So as soon as you see this problem, as soon as you see the Java home was not set, it's a simple fix to just go back in the external tool, disable and re-enable it. Uh, that's all you have to do. It's a, it's a very stupid bug. The next one you might run into is the following. Um, I can't reproduce this one here on the spot, but in the console, you might have a corrupted meta file. So there's going to be a, a meta file. I don't know which one, but I know it's in the Google play game folder. It's somewhere, I think around here under basic API. Um, basically it's a meta file and it's going to tell you that this one is, is corrupted or, uh, we were enabled to resolve for a very specific, uh, file. So all you have to do in this one, and you'll find this as well in the uh, Udemy class, if you have a look at it is simply look for the file. You will have the path in the console, click it, delete it. It's a meta file and you can pretty much delete any meta file. It's just going to regenerate itself with a good format afterward. Another issue you might run into in case you are just building now for the, um, the Android platform and the Google play platform is, um, we now have, there's a requirement. We all have to be under API level 29 and above. Now, if that doesn't work for you, if putting it on 29 does not allow you to build, you will have to upgrade to a new version of unity. Now I was in 2019 and I was not like, was not willing to go back to 2020, not for this project at least. So all I did is upgraded my LTS. I believe I was on 19.4.2 and I upgraded all the way to 19.4.14, which is still the LTS version. It's just a little bit further with bug fix. This one is technically not the bug fix, but it integrated new version of the Android SDK in the built-in Unity SDK. Um, so that works from that point on. Other than that, I did not run into any other issues when it came down to my build. Um, I do have a signed APK, so I just enter my password, I build it to my phone and everything works. So if you have anything else that you run into, please let me know in the comment section down below, because I'd like to just compile all these problems and also help you resolve them. That being said, we're done with section number two. All right. So let's go over to the section number three. This time around, we are looking for the Google sign in and also the activation. So it's going to be the first time that we integrate the code that we, um, that we've gotten from the Google play games, um, plugin and also the social platform. It's going to be the first time that we integrate this code within our code. Now let's have a look at what we have to do first. Um, if the plugin installation was done properly, you will now have access to the play games platform class in which you have to call the activate in an awake statement or a start statement. The only thing that really matters here is, is that it's done before we sign in. So in a wake, you just call play game platform dot activate. Awesome. And then a little bit further down the line. So that's my awake statement, start statement. There is the sign in to Google play services in which all I do is call the authenticate. And then I send in a certain parameter. So I want this to only be prompt once. So you could read the full text here, but what it says is that it's only prompting once. And if the person declines, we're not going to ask him again. However, in my game, a little bit further down the line, I offer a manual option to sign in if, if required. And then after that, you parse the result, in which case, is it successful or is it any of the other reason? And God knows there is a bunch of other reason already in progress, cancel, error, fail, blah, blah, blah. So if it's success, we do yes. If it's any of the others, we are not signed in. This is simply a Boolean that I keep just for myself. Um, that's part of the logic in my game. So now it's very simple code. I know, but we ran into a bunch of problems when it came down to actually not a bunch, just one, but that one problem is really annoying to solve. So let me explain to you what is happening. In my Google Play settings over here on the enable anti-piracy, even though that's on off, I cannot use build that I've made on Unity and, and build directly to my phone. I cannot use that to actually test any of this code. I have to absolutely make a build out of whatever I'm doing. Um, that's going to hash it up into one single file. So a bundle, then the ash of that bundle has to be exactly the same as one of the build I have uploaded on the platform. So this flow goes like this. I make some modification in the game. I build, 
I when I build, I upgrade my bundle version, my code version. I make sure to update that. And then I have to go here, either send a new production release, which is going to push it to all my user. And that's not really wanted for two reasons. One, your user all across the world will receive a update notification. So you will, they'll be able to update to the new app that you've made just for testing. So you might have some bugs in there. That's annoying. And the second, because it also has a review period. So Google has to review the application. It has to go through the machine. Is it safe? Is it not? Um, so there, that's two reasons why you don't want to create a new APK under the production. So what I had to do instead is go under the testing. I created myself an internal testing. And here you can see I have a release history of a couple of things that I've made while I was testing out. Go under tester, add in myself as a tester of my own game. So here you can see. And that's pretty much it. So once I had this, I sent myself the link. So you have a link over here. I sent myself that through Messenger so I can open it on my phone. Under release, I created a new release, uploaded my bundle here, just put anything in there. I mean, that's for internal testing. So if you'd like to put some notes, you can. But then at one point, the only thing that matters is that you have a release. And I'm currently using the untitled release. Oh, never mind, discard. Yeah, this last release here, is where I did my final test where everything worked. Um, and to get this release, I had to uninstall my previous game that I've built through Unity, install it through the, the store this time. So I went on my phone, clicked the link, installed it through the store, and then I saw myself signing in. So to give you a quick example, I'm gonna sign in and here, I can see here at the beginning, I'm capturing my phone, by the way, it's uh, I have to click on the capture, but as you can see here at the top, Hey there, and then that's my Google Play services name. Um, everything is working, and I was able to sign in. Now, I'm also going to show you while I'm here. Here is the, the achievement, there's only one. And also here is the leaderboard in which I am victorious. So, yeah, okay, cool. Once again, if you have any problem with the signing in or the part where you activate, which is a simple call, um, go ahead, leave me a comment in the description down below. We'll have a look at it together and we'll try to make a big mega thread of all the thing that we need. So that being said, we're now ready for part number four. Part number four, fairly simple. We are reporting progress and also reporting the achievement states. So um, it's a single line of code. It's awesome. It's very easy. And I believe that I put it under the game state def. Yeah, so it, here it is. Prior to saving, set the score if needed. So here in my code, I look if my high score is bigger than it was. If it was, then I save it as my high score. But at the same time, if I reach a point where I am in a high score state, then I go ahead and I look, am I connected to the Google Play services? That's my Boolean. Remember earlier I had a Boolean? Yeah, this one. Um, this is my Boolean that I've got from the sign in. So if that one is true, then I call social report score my high score. That's an actual number here at int. And then my ID top score. And I send it over if it's successful. So that's all you have to do for the leaderboard. Now over to game stats. It's the same exact thing. So every time that there is a new fish, um, I call one action called on new fish. And I look, is my fish count equal to 10? If it is, I do social report progress the ID of my achievement, and then how much progress I've made towards this achievement. So it goes in between zero and one, uh, sorry, zero and 100. If I report 75 this time and 25 on a second attempt, then it's going to be 100. Um, so if you want to fail the achievement in one go, you just do 100. The null here is simply a callback. Just like we had earlier, It um, in case something goes wrong, then I just say, debug.log error, but it's a callback basically that you can put in there if something works or if it doesn't. Now there is a neat little pop-up that you're gonna receive once you do that. So once you do an achievement, um, you'll receive a small pop-up here at the top of your game and it's gonna say, hey, you've unlocked this achievement. Here's how many experience you've got. Once again, if you receive any problem with this, uh, just make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. And that pretty much wraps up the speed integration of the Google Play game services. Um, I tried to do the, the video in a different manner this time for the sole purpose that I made four different videos and they were way too long for the channel and those are all on Udemy, so if you'd like to check them out, uh, that's basically me going through the same flow 
but with visual, with more visual, and also uh, a lot of troubleshooting. So that was really annoying. Um, but it, it is going to help you out figure out this problem if you do have. So it's in the course. There is going to be a link in the description down below if you'd like to get that. Always appreciate it when people do sign up for the course because it gives me a small monetary uh, compensation for making this course and also it helps me just put more time towards the YouTube channel and the Udemy instead of my freelancing job. So that being said, I'd like to thank everybody who has been watching for I don't know how long, but um, I really appreciate it. And we're going to see each other on next Wednesday.